Good evening, everybody. A new report exposes the Obama administration's shocking abuse of power. Circa News reporting Obama's National Security Agency spied on American citizens with impunity, violated the Constitution, and received a free pass from the left-wing national media for eight full years. More than one out of 20 Internet searches conducted by the NSA violated U.S. private information laws. Fox News Chief in Washington correspondent James Rosen has our report. On the day President Obama visited Los Angeles last October to yuck it up with Jimmy Kimmel, lawyers for the National Security Agency were quietly informing the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court that NSA had systematically violated the rights of countless Americans, a subject covered ironically on Kimmel's program. People expect the government to monitor this enough to protect them from bad guys, but they worry that if government is in there too much, then that who's going to protect them from government. Declassified documents first obtained by the news outlet Circa show the FISA court sharply rebuked the administration. With greater frequency than previously disclosed to the court, NSA analysts had used U.S. person identifiers to query the results of Internet upstream collection, even though NSA's Section 702 minimization procedures prohibited such queries. Minimization refers to the precautions the government is supposed to take to ensure its infringements on Americans' rights are kept to a minimum. The judges blasted NSA's institutional lack of candor and added this is a very serious Fourth Amendment issue. And tonight, for the first time, we can say confidently that there's been a finding that some of that espionage, that uh, spying on Americans actually violated the law. The documents show it was back in 2011 that the FISA court first determined NSA's procedures to be, quote, statutorily and constitutionally deficient with respect to their protection of U.S. person information. Five years later, two weeks before Election Day, the judges learned that NSA had never adequately enacted the changes it had promised to make. The NSA Inspector General and its Office of Compliance for Operations have been conducting other reviews covering different times periods, the judges noted, with preliminary results suggesting that the problem was widespread during all periods of review. There's a linear connection between excessive acquisition of data by the intelligence community, distribution of that raw data to people who do not need to know it, availability of unmasking that is producing the real true names of the human beings whose emails, texts, and phone calls were the subject of all this, and then ultimately the selective revelation of those names. Senator Rand Paul, Republican of Kentucky and a stalwart libertarian, called this an amazing abuse of power. A spokesman for former President Obama did not return a request for comment. These disclosures are timely, though, as Section 702 of the FISA Amendments Act, one of the primary means by which U.S. citizens get caught up in incidental surveillance, is up for reauthorization by Congress at year's end, Lou. And uh, it is going to be an interesting process. 702, the intelligence community tells it's absolutely essential. It is clearly being abused uh, by the, uh, the Obama administration in, ne in nearly every respect. Uh, this is an administration whose CIA spied on the Senate Intelligence Committee. The spy scandal led by Susan uh, Rice, uh, the national security uh, advisor. James, this is, uh, this is a story, a scandal that worsens uh, by the day, it seems. I, too, know a little something about being placed under surveillance by the Obama yes, administration. Uh, and so I suspect we've not heard the last of this. James, thanks so much. Uh, the irony did not escape me, but for a moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate okay. your report, as always. Fox News tonight releasing new polls on the fraudulent Russia scandal. If there were Russian efforts to influence our presidential election last year, 49% say it had no effect on the outcome of the election, compared to 44% who say that it helped Donald Trump. 45% say the special counsel investigation will reveal there was no coordination between the Trump campaign and Russia. Joining me now to discuss the fake news Russia scandal, the shameful Obama spy scandal, which worsens, as uh, James Rosen pointed out, and much more. Chris Farrell, he's the director of investigations and research at Judicial Watch. Chris, it it just gets worse by, it, as I said, seemingly the day, the week. 
uh, the the Obama administration was spying on America, the violating the Constitution and doing so with a uh, sanctimonious tone that it would have had us all disbelieve any such account during his presidency because the national left-wing media uh, was complicit. Uh, the oversight committees were being spied upon and, and just ignoring that fact. I mean, this is rancid what we are looking at uh, that occurred under President Obama. It's uh, reckless criminal behavior. I pray to God that uh, the attorney general has a grand jury impaneled because this is the kind of stuff that people have to go to jail over. This can't be glossed over or uh, talked about as just, you know, an unfortunate incident. This is government agencies knowingly, willfully lying to the FISA court. This is an administration that has uh, weaponized the intelligence agencies for domestic political purposes, just like it did the IRS. Remember, it's completely consistent that the same administration that would use the IRS against political opponents would use the intelligence system and agencies to also spy domestically on their opponents. And this is an abuse of power and authority like we have never seen in this country. And, and, and part of this rests with uh, the courts themselves. The FISA court calling it a, a lack of candor. Are you kidding me? It's contempt is what it is, and there should have been U.S. Marshals taking the various attorneys who made misrepresentations into custody. I mean, th there's got to be a hardball approach to this. It cannot be, let's just talk it away. And frankly, there are members of the Super 8 or Gang of Eight on the Hill who I believe have guilty knowledge of this. This went on for years. This was a, an expansion on authority that was uh, reckless is the best word, but I, I, it, I'm going to I'm going to further this just a bit, if I may, in in terms of uh, what it represents. It represents an explanation as well of the fanatical uh, uh, attacks on the part of the left in this country on President Trump and his uh, first his transition team and then his administration. This is a group of eight, as you suggest, in uh, the most, most powerful men and women in Congress and the Senate who have oversight responsibilities and beyond that, other uh, committees that have oversight over the intelligence community. They had to know that these rights of American citizens were being trampled uh, by uh, the NSA, by other agencies. You're right. And secondly, in, in addition to that, You've got a, an FBI director in James Comey who refused to prosecute, who pr refused to investigate and to bring consequence to those who are violating laws, obviously so, whether it be the IRS targeting of conservatives or Fast and Furious or the Clinton Foundation, which was an obvious, an obvious criminal enterprise. Well, the, one and, of the and, things, and here we are with a national left-wing media that is utterly complicit through their, in most cases, simply acquiescence, but in some cases, their own aggressive eagerness to join uh, with the left. Well, the Obama administration, as part of their technique in doing this, always involves and makes complicit the agency involved. For example, when they weaponized the IRS, they had Lois Lerner and her circle communicating with the Justice Department about criminal prosecutions. So they wrapped the FBI, who went through 1.25 million IRS files, so they were complicit in the act. They're not going to prosecute them. They're involved in it. The same with the NSA. The same with any of the intelligence agencies that were used to collect intelligence. The, well, the, the, the agencies themselves are complicit, so they're very, very slow to respond, react, to cooperate with IGs. It's really a racket, and it, it, needs, it needs an attorney general to launch a grand jury and to break this once and for all. Attorney General Sessions, he's the man responsible here, and he has to do something. If we're going to see this swamp drained, if we're going to see this kind of behavior, this conduct, this 
criminal conduct, abusive conduct of government power, uh, we've got to have consequences. People have to be prosecuted, as you said. Uh, do you believe the attorney general will uh, initiate those investigations and seek those consequences? He damn well better. I mean, the, the, the Constitution is at risk. I'm not exaggerating. This is not, you know, hyperbolic television talk. You cannot allow officers and agents of the federal government to violate the Fourth Amendment this grossly, mm -hmm. to thumb their nose at the courts, and then everyone just walks away. It cannot happen. There has got to be a criminal prosecution. Chris Farrell, as always, thanks for being with us. And, uh, and now uh, we rely upon the Attorney General. We're coming right back with much more. Stay with us.